it as we get set for round two of EA Sports Supercross. And if tonight's anything like round one, hold on to your seats. Last week in round one, the big two had big trouble, but these three each had big nights. Tonight, the champ, the former champ, and the future champ are each hoping for a big turnaround. Before an expected standing room only crowd, it's the second round of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. Hello everyone, I'm Art Ekman along with defending champion David Bailey. Well, it was quite an unexpected happening in the first round with the notables Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael, and the 250 rookie Travis Pastrana digging quite a hole for themselves. Well, I'll tell you what, they, are, they can't afford another hit like that in terms of the championship. Uh, I was talking to Tim Ferry after the practice session today. He didn't ride Anaheim. He's like, I'm in the hunt. I'm only two points behind Pastrana, one behind Carmichael. Now, the guy that really has an opportunity here to, to break away from Carmichael in his hometown is McGrath. The big question is, can his arms take it? It'll be interesting to see if the winner, David Villeman, and maybe like Mike LaRocco can hold on to their edge because the pressure is on them right now. But of course, the focus is always going to be on the defending champion, Ricky Carmichael. Everybody expected Ricky Carmichael to win last week, but nobody expected this. Not to mention a last place finish. As you saw last week, our defending champion had quite a crash. Ricky, what exactly happened and how do you feel? Well, I feel fine, and uh, what happened was I took a little bit different of a line after the tunnel there and uh, to get over that step up, and it kicked me over the handlebars a little bit. It was uh, totally my fault, you know. It's uh, just a little bit different line, and, and the, the takeoff of the jump was different, and, uh, man, I hit, hit the dirt hard, and, you know, that's the way it goes. I had a, a, a lot of luck last year, and uh, but that one bit me last weekend, and... My main goal tonight is is to make it through the night and get some points so uh, I feel, uh, you know, close to 100% next weekend. The champ is in a hole. He's got to pick it up here tonight in San Diego. David, take us through the speed stick track map. Well, here you got the start right down, and as soon as they come out of the first corner, right into a whoop section. Not as difficult as what we saw last week in Anaheim, but it gets these guys' attention right away. Let's go on board now with Keith Johnson. He takes us over the first triple jump, 65 feet through the air. See some loose soil starting to come up right there. That'll mess with you when you're trying to pick an exact line through the rhythm section here. He chooses the inside at the approach of the next triple. Because he doesn't have a run at it, he can only double. That leads you into these whoops right here, which are even bigger than those. And yes, yeah, so after you go over the finish line jump, you tuck back underneath and back into the first corner. We've got some great matchups. In our qualifying heats here this evening in San Diego in the 250s, round number two, as we take a look at LaRocco, Fonseca, Reed, Way, Roy, Huffman, Lewis, Brown, Evans, and Pastrana. What do you think of that LaRocco Pastrana matchup? Could be good. Pastrana was reeling in LaRocco a little bit in the heat race last week, but he made a few mistakes. So there he is right there. Travis, talk to him after the practice session. He feels good. The boys sideways, we're ready to go for our first qualifying heat of the 250s. Great start by Pastrana and Morocco. And the battle is on now with Sebastian Waugh. Jean Sebastian Waugh from Blackfoot Honda out of Canada is our leader of the first heat with Tim Ferry moving into second place. Travis Pastrana and Ferry Morocco in fourth. Unbelievable intensity right away. I thought Travis was going to get through that boot section and have an early lead, but. Here's Ferry. Ferry tests him on the inside, but Waugh looks back at it. Pastrana takes second place. A three-way battle for second with LaRocco on the outside. So number 40 is Waugh. Number 199 on the Suzuki is Travis Pastrana, who looked very fast in practice. He did. I think he had the fastest lap time unofficially. But he's got Ferry breathing down his neck right now, and LaRocco watching all this, hoping they take each other out. I'll tell you, Ferry believes he was injured in practice before the start of the season. Here is the lead change. Number 199, Travis Pastrana draws the cheers from this packed house here in San Diego. This is a busy technical track, and that's what suits Pastrana. He didn't get to the whoops on the start. He fixes it that time, and Ferry follows him. Great racing. Ferry, the block pass on Wall. Remember, only the top four advance directly to the main event. The rest have to go to the semifinals. I can't think of a time that Travis got the whole shot on a 250, but it's nice to see him out front, not have to fight through the 
the pack. He's got clean sailing right now. He should be able to open up just a little bit of a lead. But then again, Ferry, even though he came from knee surgery, he doesn't appear to have any rust at all. He had that uh, arthroscopic knee surgery. They took some cartilage, about 70% of the meniscus uh, cartilage out of that, that knee. So he was able to come back and only miss one race. That's thanks to Jeff Spencer, who's also, from what I understand, helping Ricky Carmichael through this event. Jeff Spencer, of course, the trainer, clear back in the early 80s with Team Honda, and he helps Lance Armstrong with Tour de France. You see a yellow arrow near the name up there on our counter. That means they're in the qualifying positions. As we watch our leader, Travis Pastrana, starting to pull away from the four stroke of Tim Ferry on the Yamaha. As soon as Travis is able to get out front and use the lines he wanted to, not have to play the, the blocking game, I had a feeling, look at that, uh-oh, nice save right there. He was trying something a little different. He can't afford those mistakes because Ferry will be all over him. When he's in the clear and can relax, the guy is fast. These qualifiers are eight clappers. As Travis Pastrana heads over the finish line, jump with Ferry in second place. LaRocco has moved into third. Travis just turned the fastest lap at a 56. A full second faster than Ferry and LaRocco. In danger of not qualifying, Chad Reed, Ernesto Fonseca, Nicholas Way. It's closing up. Hold on to your hats. LaRocco trying to make a move to close up on Ferry. Travis looks back after the triple to see the blue line of Ferry, number 15. He's got to look way back. Even though he made that mistake, Ferry got on him. He was able to stretch it back out. Now Ferry's got to be a little bit more concerned with LaRocco. It's hard not to worry about the guy behind you when he's number five, and he always is strong at the end. At least the top three have pulled away from number four in that final qualify. You know, Ferry might be feeling it about now. Depends yeah. on how much time he's had to spend on the right. He sounds confident, but, you know, then again, so did Jeremy before last week. And these guys try to fight off the pressure and act relaxed, but how they're riding out there really shows. And Ferry is he's just not getting it together right now. LaRocco's all over him as Travis is just flawless out front. Let's check out the sights and sounds of this qualifier. second place as we see Pastrana with the big lead. There you see LaRocco with the picture. Makes the move on Tim Ferry. Goes to the outside, but Ferry holds him off with an inside move. But Ferry is looking a little tentative. He's having to ride completely defensive right now and just block. That's his only prayer. But I, I'll give it to him for having this kind of resolve when he can't be 100% given the knee surgery. There goes LaRocco. Boy, when you talk about tough athletes, you've got to include supercross motocrossers well, in the top five at least, when you see Ricky Carmichael after a cracked hand coming back and doing a great job in practice. And then Tim Ferry after being out with surgery. There's Ricky Carmichael getting ready for the second qualifying heat. And what a matchup he has. Jeremy McGrath is in that same heat coming up. There's LaRocco number five. I'm anxious to see now what LaRocco can do now that he's in the clear. Pretty fast in that loop section. He's the only guy I've seen so far going way to the left where he doesn't have to fight that rut down the middle. Sets him up a little bit better for the corner also. Morocco had the fastest qualifying heat time in round one, beating RC's time last week. That was a big surprise to everybody, including Ricky, who I think felt the pressure from that and may have led to him making some mistakes and then crashing. The last lap by Travis was a second and a half faster than what LaRocco was turning, even though LaRocco was in the clear. With Travis in the lead, let's go down to Davey. Well, you guys were talking about Travis. I know that he was really upset about his ride last week, not just his finishing position, but 19th of the way he rode. This has to do well for him. Morocco, arguably the fastest round of track last week at Anaheim, and right now Travis is really putting it to him. You know, the thing about Travis last week is that he was up front. He got in a little battle with Fonseca and got shoved over the berm. I don't think he appreciated it much, but racing's racing. Travis owes 
Yeah. Fonseca won, that's for sure, but it was no fault of his own, really. He, the front wheel was destroyed and he was forced to sit out the race. So he knows he has the speed, just needs to stay in the, in the battle. The white flag is waving as LaRocco goes by in second place. Ferry still in third, but Chad Reed, in his first American Supercross season, has moved up in a qualifying position in fourth. For the last time I looked, he was down in the double digits. There's Pastrana. Rocco. Lapper behind him. He's taking his lap time down to a 57 flat. That's what Travis is doing, but Travis is doing it. Oh, back and back time. He's doing all that, too. So Travis is definitely feeling it, but is still going to take a start so he can get out there and ride this freely. Travis Pastrana, very disappointed, and he goes for another trick on the triple. Very disappointed after that opening week of action. Sinus infection didn't help him much going into that night. No. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is probably feeling like the 125 class did to him. Big lead, tricks, here comes another opportunity for a trick. And the trickers for Travis Pastrana. Boy, he's feeling great. He is pumped up after getting uh, Fonseca's bike into his front wheel during the main event last week. And uh, broke some spokes and put him out of the race, placing him in 19th. In the first round at Anaheim, Travis Pastrana comes back to strut his stuff here in the second qualifying heat. Still posted faster laps than LaRocco. He pulled away. He was able to ride comfortably. Experimented around with a couple of different lines. Travis is on. Check out that last jump across the finish line. <laughs> Wasn't quite the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Boy, what a great move by Travis Pastrana. As we take a look at the leaderboard with Pastrana advancing to the main event along with Mike LaRocco, Chad Reed, Tim Ferry. But that puts an awful lot of talent into the semifinal round. Guys like Michael Craig, Nicholas Way, Huffman, Lewis, and Michael Brown. As we see right here, our Honda leaderboard. Heat number one completed. An anticipated battle coming up next. Round two of the EA Sports Supercross is being brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross Champion by EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. I got in here, you filthy animal. At 400 bucks a night, I'll bring whatever I want to my room. Security! <laughs> Help me! I've been run over by Mad Mike Jones! Winter X Games 6 and Aspen, sponsored by Right Guard Extreme Sport, begins February 1st on ESPN. Dave Chappelle here. I'm setting this guy up on a blind date to show that right guard extreme sport works under the most extreme conditions. Ladies! You gotta get a number, dog. See? Extreme protection against odor and wetness. Love hurts! Goes on clear, doesn't quit. You guys are really hitting it off. Right guard extreme sport. Get extreme. Get right guard. Call us! Definitely will. Thank you. Ice the knees, ice the threes. Will Tennessee take out another top ten team when they battle the Orangemen? Syracuse, Tennessee, tonight at 8 on ESPN. 
Back in San Diego, there's no doubt that Travis Pastrana has gained a great deal of confidence here with this qualifying heat. He is with our Davey Combs. Travis, you look like you were having a blast out there. Man, that's what it, I'm kind of coming back to. Just want to go out there, have a good time. I've really been working starts, and I think if I can get good starts, I can be in this championship hunt. Michael Rocco was the fastest guy on the track last week. You had him checked. Can you do it again in the main event? I sure hope so. I know my conditioning's there. This track is really tough this week, but a week, I guarantee you Suzuki has the fastest bike on the track. Kevin and I are just, there's no excuses. So I'm going to go out there. I feel healthy this week. You know, I'm ready to put at least on podium, and I'm going out for the win. Everybody, all 70,000-plus fans, a new San Diego record has their eyes on defending champion Ricky Carmichael. He had his first win here in San Diego in the first of 14 last year as we take a look at the lineups. You see the winner of the first race, Billiman. Byrne, who had an excellent race. Lusk. But don't forget Jeremy McGrath. It's a preview, maybe, of things to come in the main event, David. Yes, it is, because you've got, like you just said, Villeman, Burn, Lust, Wyndham, McGrath. It's like a main event from last year. It's unbelievable, because Travis was in the 125 class last year, so there you see McGrath. They've got Ryan Terlecki, number seven, 97, right there between himself and Carmichael. Carmichael to the inside, so if they get there to the corner about the same, Carmichael will have the edge. Last year, we saw 61,368 fans here in San Diego. We have over 70,000 tonight with the 32nd board in the air. Will Kevin Windham come out of his shell or Stefan Roncata here in the second qualifying heat? We mentioned the headliners, Jeremy McGrath, going through his nervous nervousness, and now he's ready, revving it up. Second qualifying heat is underway. Lusk on the inside, Carmichael in the middle, and Jeremy McGrath is losing room to Steve Lampson. Carmichael, Lusk, McGrath, Lampson, Wyndham, and Philemon in that order. McGrath almost got a two for one in that pass with Lampson. Mm -hmm. Kind of set a pick and he almost got lost as well, but lost. And Carmichael, how about the tension between those guys? They switched motorcycles. Lust is riding Carmichael's bike from last year and vice versa. Not a whole lot of love lost there, and they're chased by McGrath. This is perfect. It is amazing. They were very close friends at one time, Ricky Carmichael and Ezra Lusk. Lusk is coming back with a new team after a couple of injury riddled seasons. Came on strong at the finish of last year. Well, I think what we got to look for here is how is Ricky's injury from last week going to pan out? Is he going to be able to hang on? Is he a little rusty? He didn't ride yesterday's practice. McGrath. With him and McGrath. McGrath is fighting for third. to R.C. as Wyndham has moved into third in front of Jeremy McGrath. Well, McGrath made a mistake with the long, long loop section, and Wyndham took advantage of it. Jeremy trying to do a little something there different. Can't look, jump the triple. He's got to take a deep breath and just get back to basics. He was fast in practice. He knows what to do. They're all right there. This isn't over yet. Barrett and Bob moving up a lap, but they're way out of contention as far as the top four are concerned. Lusk still keeping the pressure on Carmichael. What a difference from last year. Carmichael just, just destroying the field in all of his heat races. McGrath losing time now to that front three. Yeah, they're going bang, bang, bang in the top three. Wyndham having some problems in the wolves as we look at Jeremy McGrath. But check out coming into our picture now. It's Lusk on the tail of RC. You suspect, suspect it's a strategy too to push him as much as possible to make him use that clutch. Absolutely. Keep the pressure on the guy. He's he's not 100% right that right now. Make him ride 100% and see if he can do it. He might fall again. That's what you got to do if you're Ezra. McGrath is in the final qualifying spot, and before it's over, he might get some challenges from Steve Lampson. Tell you what could be happening right now for Carmichael. He just threw everyone a curve. He didn't ride yesterday's practice. Kind of gave the sense that he's injured. But he may have played a great bluff. He's got Jeff Spencer here helping him to get back to 100%. Jeff Spencer and Lance Armstrong created the greatest bluff in perhaps sports history at the Alpe d'Huez of the Tour de France. He acted tired and just killed him on the last climb. Ricky might be a lot better than we thought. For the latest on trackside, let's go to David. Well, 
I want to point out something. Ricky Carmichael, don't say he doesn't believe in luck because he decided this week after the big crash to go back to the orange riding gear that carried him through that winning streak last year. Carmichael pulling out all the stops even when it comes to luck going back to the orange. Yeah, we got Ezra Lusk and his orange right behind him, too, in a pretty good battle here in our second qualifying heat as they pulled away from Wyndham. And now McGrath is pulled up by Wyndham as we check out Ricky Carmichael, our leader. Ricky's last lap of 56.3. Faster than Travis Pastrana. He's looking for his second straight heat win in a row. Number 14 on the Suzuki is Kevin Wyndham. He's in third. Ramsey and Philemon moving up in that last lap. It's questionable whether they can really challenge uh, Jeremy McGrath unless McGrath makes another mistake. McGrath really, his problems were just in that roof section. He struggled so bad. Now he's getting pressure from Ramsey on that Honda 450. Ramsey number 25 on the red bike. That's Wyndham. Behind Wyndham is Jeremy McGrath, and then it's Ramsey. Ramsey, a 120 winner in his first full season of 250. Did well in part time 250 action last year. As we look at this battle, now Villeman's starting to join the fray. And I'll tell you what, these guys are just nowhere near Carmichael and Lusk out front. Wyndham's trying to check out from this pack we're looking at, but Carmichael and Lusk are at another level. Actually, Carmichael's lap time at 56.3. Two tenths, actually slower than Carmichael, my mistake. I mean, than uh, Travis Pastrana. Ramsey and Villeman right on the bubble as uh, McGrath is in the last qualifying spot. Here comes Ramsey in the woods. And here comes Villeman behind him. That time, McGrath found a rhythm. If he can keep that, he should be able to keep these guys off his tail. As Carmichael holds off Ezra Lusk for the lead, this is a great battle for the final final spot to qualify for the main event. It's going to get tight because Villeman is not, but he's last week's winner. He doesn't want to go to a semi, but this is his strength, this section. He's got a different line. He was watching what LaRocco was doing. It doesn't work for him that time. Slowing a bit to get around Clark Styles. Number two, Jeremy McGrath. But he's got some action right behind him. He cannot afford number one arm pump or number two on the stage. Jeremy Lusk uh -oh. went down on the track. I was about to say, Jeremy just jumped through that section a completely different way, which is a sign that arm pump is not a problem. Lusk going down will take a little bit of the pressure off McGrath. Possibly getting bumped back to that semi, but Ricky Carmichael is gone. So a bad break for Ezra Lusk, who's trying to put a comeback season together and still has a good shot at it. Philman trying to take on Ramsey so he can get a shot at Jeremy McGrath, number two on the Yamaha. The final transfer right there. Ramsey not giving Philman a break, that's for sure. Philman's going to be saying, what's going on? Of course, he's saying it in French. The white flag is out as these guys approach the finish line jump. Carmichael, he can fall and still win this thing, but what I think we need to look at right here is the fact that McGrath is still fighting. He's got a chance to get around Wyndham, so arm pump right now is not a problem. He just had a, an ugly rhythm through this section right here at that first three or four laps. Yellow Arrow means they're in that final transfer spot right there as Ezra Lusk has slipped to seventh, not caught in sixth. Philbin in fifth as Ricky Carmichael looks back to see just how much he's in front a long way. You're going to get whiplash trying to see back that far. He, he can't even look back and see the pack. I'll tell you, McGrath is fighting for his life right now. McGrath is in third, but he's got two bikes right behind him as we see Ricky Carmichael, number four, on the Honda. All right, so whatever booing or whatever weird feelings people had towards Carmichael, they got to look at this kid and go, man, he just dug himself out of a big hole. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael. There you see the yellow arrow. Ramsey's in a position to take that foot spot. He's right behind McGrath. Oh, he might have a little rubber right there. A little rubber the plastic. The checkered flag comes across. It's Carmichael. Wyndham is second. McGrath able to hold off. Nathan Ramsey on the four-stroke Honda, Yamaha, Honda, I should say, and last week's winner, David Philbin. Check out the uh, Suzuki leaderboard as Ricky Carmichael himself looks up at the leaderboard to see who was behind him, of course. 
the Honda of Carmichael, Wyndham on a Suzuki, Jeremy McGrath on the Yamaha, and Ramsey on the Honda, all qualifying for the main event. We'll hear from the winner once we return to San Diego before this 70,000 group of fans. is on in-demand pay-per-view live January 20th. Don't keep your TV in the dark ages with that old cable box. Jump into the 21st century with Adelphia Digital Cable. Adelphia Digital Cable has more channels and options to enjoy. With over 190 channels, there's always something to watch. Don't forget your home office. PowerLink is going two-way and will be faster than ever. No more dial-up. Your internet connection will always be there. Two-way PowerLink is now available in Western Loudoun and is coming soon to Ashburn. Call Adelphia Customer Service at 703-430-8200 to get connected today. Sunday, a night of originals from ESPN, the debut of The Block. First at 8, NBA Hoop Dreams from the bottom up, the premiere of Down Low, Life in the D-League. PTI at 9. At 9.30, ride the bus to the playoffs, The Life, Jerome Bettis. At 10, part one of the season, Arizona Wildcat football. Down Low, Life in the D-League at 8, PTI at 9, The Life, Jerome Bettis at 9.30. The season, Arizona football at 10, the premiere of The Block, Sunday night on ESPN. I can't stand looking at that thing. I think it's cool. It's Suzuki's first sport utility ATV, the all-new Vincent 500 automatic. Let me tell you, that Vincent's one hard-working... Hey, keep on. You're of not it. the boss of me. I don't and you know what? I don't like appreciate... It's got style and a ton of great features. Will you shut up? Or you'll do what? Stare him to death? Oh, oh, God. God. Now choose reduced financing like 2.95% APR or up to $400 in free accessories. Can I drive? No. Let me drive. Wait. Uh -uh. Can you let me drive? No. Mm. in San Diego as we take a look at the upcoming events. We'll be in Phoenix, Arizona on the 26th, then it's on to Anaheim. We go to the Midwest in Minneapolis and Indianapolis. Let's go to the winner of our second qualifying heat along with Davey Coombs. Davey. Quarcy, you've come a long way since we saw you last weekend. Yeah, I tell you, Davey, last weekend was scary, man, and uh, I won my heat race last week, but I need to be up there in the main, you know. Uh, I had great positioning. I made a dumb mistake on my part, and luckily I'm here today standing up here. It was uh, definitely scary, but I got to put that behind me. I just want to make it safe through tonight. I just need to get some points. Speaking of safety, there's some talk about your hand. How is the hand? Uh, it's a little sore, you know. I uh, hurt a bone inside my hand, and, uh, you know, I just need to come out and get points, and uh, I don't want to be on the ground in that main event. So uh, I'm going to ride a little cautious, and... Uh, you know, if, if anything other than making it through the night will be a bonus for sure. He is a seven-time Supercross champion, and with 72 career wins, Jeremy McGrath has been accustomed to winning and winning often. But last year, he only took the checkers twice, and last week, he was more than a lap away from the checkers. You know, there's a lot of expectations on me, but no one expects more of me than, than myself. You know, I don't have to... I don't have to force myself to go train. I don't have to force myself to go ride, because that's what I do, and I love it. And if I want to be at the racetrack, then I want to be winning. And it's no fun otherwise, you know? I had a difficult year, and it was a struggle all year long to, you know, to accept what was going on and try and figure out and regroup and how I was going to approach it for the next year. And, you know, I think I've got it all figured out, a lot less distractions this year, and, you know, I got tunnel vision right now. And with his new vision comes new focus, mentally and physically. I've been doing some weights and, of course, just doing a lot of cardio, you know, and watching what I eat. And, you know, before I'd take a couple months off during the summer and, 
you know, Las Vegas Supercross was a real big motivator for me. You know, I, I knew I was behind the ball when it came to the season, when I got beat by Ricky right right away in San Diego and and Anaheim and stuff like that. And you know, so at Vegas, I you know poured my heart out. You know, I wanted to win that race so bad, and I was right there, and I made a mistake, and I I kept him honest. I was right on his butt, and you know, after that, ever since that day, I mean, I was. I've been working my butt off because, you know, I can't stand it, and I don't feel like I belong where I am, and I want to be on top. Now at 30 years old, Jeremy McGrath looks forward to the success of his past. You know, I've had a great level of success, and I mean, I'm, I'm lucky to be able to do, like in 97, when I came back and won again in 98, not a lot of times that that happens to athletes, you know, and uh, I feel very privileged for that, and you know, my main goal is to get the Supercross title back, and I think I can do it. Jeremy referred to Las Vegas. Well, for our Honda flashback this week, let's open the history book to take a look at that race. It was a great battle between RC and Showtime. Ricky Carmichael, number four on the Kawasaki. Jeremy McGrath, the defending champion last year, number one on the Yamaha. RC had already clinched his very first 250 Supercross title two races prior. But the motivation to tie two McGrath records spurred him on. 13th consecutive victory with the Checkers and 14 wins on the season. It capped a great year. Last Saturday night, Ricky Carmichael suffered a horrendous crash in the main. Earlier in practice last week, in the same location, he had the bike over his head. Jeff Emming explains how safety measures might have prevented more serious injury. Getting rid of my gray hair was just what I needed. Just for men. More than a hair color, it's a hair rejuvenator. Gray hair is shampooed away in five easy minutes. Vitamin Enriched Just for Men brings back a thicker, healthier, natural look. I wonder how I did tonight. Would you like to come in? Just for Men. The Rejuvenator. Out here amongst the clouds and the sea. A chain gun. Bloodwake set a course for destruction. New and only on Xbox rated T for teen. Hello? Collect call. Did you use 1-800-COLLECT? No. 1-800-COLLECT presents Ava Save-A-Lot, starring in the most horrifying movie ever. I know you're not calling me with 1-800-COLLECT. What kind of twist of mind wouldn't want me to save a buck or two? It's so easy. <gasps> what a nightmare. 1-800-COLLECT, save a buck or two. Ricky Carmichael was back on his bike today, struggling again. But the incident last week was frightening. With his take on just what happened, here's former champion Jeff Emmy. In other forms of motorsports, the protective aspects are focused on the vehicle. But in Supercross, it's on the protective equipment that the rider wears. Ricky Carmichael wears an Alpine Star boot. When Michael Rocco ran over his leg, we all thought that the leg was broke. But it's comprised of plastic, carbon fiber, and leather. It's where that is flexible, so you can feel the brakes and the pegs, but it also have the, has the protective aspect. He also took a really hard hit to the head. Now, the helmet is designed to absorb the impact of a crash. 
So it doesn't look pretty afterwards. And that's what happened with Ricky Carmichael. The helmet broke right here, came across, made a few scrapes on his face, but it also saved his racing career. REA Sports Writer of the Week is David Villeman. Villeman looking to come back after a down season last year. Would like to add to his win total that started right here in San Diego in the year 2000. A look at his stat sheet. He's hoping for more. Like a second place finish in the points race behind Jeremy McGrath in the year 2000 than last year's eighth place finish. Will RC be able to perform for 20 laps? Will Jeremy McGrath rebound from his opening round? The second round of 250 EA Sports Supercross is coming up next. Introducing the tough new crew cab long bed. It's the next frontier. Hey! 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 They took everything Gordon Brewer had. The gorillas call it collateral damage. Except his rage. The assassin is back in Colombia. But you cannot take the law into your own hands. Thanks for your advice. If it's a war they want. Don't even look at those guys unless you can kill them. They picked the wrong guy. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Collateral damage. Rated R. Starts February 8th at a theater near you. Thinking about Viagra? It's now available in a free six pill sample pack. Six? That's my number. So get in the driver's seat and ask about the free Viagra sample pack. Get to your doctor for a checkup and find out if a free sample of Viagra is right for you. For more information, race over to Viagra.com. A special Friday night fight. First on ESPN. Two champions meet in a 12-round welterweight fight. NABF champ Ben Tacky versus USBA champ Teddy Reed. Then more excitement on ESPN2. A 12-round light heavyweight title fight. NABF and USBA champion Reggie Johnson versus Antonio Tarver. Nine special Friday night fights. It all starts Friday at 8 p.m. on ESPN, then continues at 9.30 on ESPN2. Oh. Our Suzuki big moment. Ricky Carmichael takes the checkered flag in qualifying, his second qualifying win, but it comes after a horrendous crash in the main event in round number one. Our results in the semifinal with the top five making it to the main event, Damon Huffman, Nicholas Way, Waugh, Lewis, and in the second semi, David Villeman. He was awesome in that second semi. Didn't get the start he needed in the heat, but he's definitely got the speed. He learned the track during that semi. So did Ezra Lust. Our Nissan last chance qualifier, Michael Byrd and Michael Brown, the final two riders at the 20 rider gate for the 250 main event. The whole shot now, the power aid whole shot. That's the line right after the first turn. First guy to get to that is going to get 1500 bucks extra for the whole shot, but the guys that have gotten those starts haven't necessarily been in the lead at the end of that long loop section. Our Suzuki starting grid, Carmichael Pastrana, Wyndham, Jeremy McGrath, Villeman. It's a great one for our second round. As Villeman pulled off the win in the first round, but Ricky Carmichael, just how tough is Ricky Carmichael? I'm telling you with a cracked bone in the top of his hand. He's taking on Travis Pastrana and the rest here in San Diego. We're off and running. Hard eight hole shot goes to Kevin Wyndham, number 14, but it's Travis Pastrana taking the lead in the moves. Oh, he takes a giant leap onto the platform. So it's Pastrana, Wyndham, Villeman, LaRocco, Ferry, and then Ricky Carmichael. You told him that way when you were talking about the power aid hole shot. Not necessarily the first guy out of the whoops. 
Well, Travis is phenomenal in the whoops. Steve Lampson is down. This is at the end, at the end of the whoops. Steve is looking so fast in the preliminary rounds and in practice on that Husqvarna. He got collected with, uh, looks like maybe Stefan Roncata. It just got to be a big jam in the rear of the pack. Steve is uh, he's not moving just yet. A great 125 champion, especially during his years with Honda. Two-time outdoor 125 champion. Here comes the leader with the yellow flags out. Travis Pastrana, David Phillip in his second. Pastrana going over each whoop. Slowing down, Wyndham in third, LaRocco in fourth, and still Carmichael in fifth, with Tim Ferry right behind him. Well, Travis almost lost the lead right there. Villeman had a head of steam coming into the loop section, and because of Lampson being down, Travis had to change his line. Good, good uh, recovery to hang on to the lead. McGrath has moved up to eight. There you see 14, Kevin Wyndham and LaRocco. Those two might not be easy to get around on this track. It's very difficult. Villeman talked about after his semi and turning into a little bit of a one-line situation. We'll find out. He's all over the leader. Carmichael all over his teammate. Michael Rocco right now. These guys were together in reverse order that is last week. Travis Pastrana, number 199. Yellow flags are still out as Lampson is on the ground. They whiz right over his body almost. Pastrana on the Suzuki. Suzuki has never won here in San Diego. Has Travis ever led a 250 race? Main event, I can't think You got a pretty good point there. I can't recall one either. I reckon you recall it coming up and challenging. He's got to keep his cool right here. He believes in himself. He's got to just let Villeman do his thing and settle down. With Pastrana taking a 19th in the first round, Villeman, of course, would uh, get a nice edge in that points lead over Carmichael. The chances are it won't stay the same. A 20-lap main event, 20 riders in the 250 field here in San Diego. Let's get a report on Steve Lampson. Davy Cobes? Well, I just talked to Dr. John Bonner. Looks like a broken leg for Lampson. A broken leg. Oh, Villeman just passes Travis Pastrana. And the bad news about Lampson. Thanks, Davy. David Villeman, who won the first round at Anaheim, has taken the lead away from Travis Pastrana. That's okay. Travis just got to keep his cool right here and just get comfortable with running up front. He's never done this before. The lead's right there. He's got his teammate on his tail. That, that doesn't make you that nervous. He, he knows what Wyndham's all about, what his capabilities are. They ride together. Wyndham trying to recover from a not-so-good result in the first round as well. I'll tell you what the news is here. Uh, Carmichael has gotten around the rocker, broken free of him, and he's starting to reel in this battle right here between the Suzuki teammates. Carmichael is just blowing my mind tonight, Art. I cannot believe how strong he has come back from that hand injury. Well, you've had a broken bone at the top of your hand before, and it's not a fun thing as... Uh, hold it a minute, David. Let's go down to Davey. Hey, I'm down here with Brian Schneider. This is Travis Pastrana's cousin. He also plays for the Montreal Expos. This is the stadium where you got your first major league hit. What do you think about Travis maybe getting the first 250 pro win here? Well, this place is real special to me. I'm just hoping it's real special to him tonight. He's racing good. I hope we keep it up. Why don't you get back out there and cheer? Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. David Villeman, tough with the lead. He's got good technique with Travis Pastrana, the rookie 250 rider behind him, and Kevin Windham, a teammate behind him, with Ricky Carmichael knocking on the door in point. Boy, this could be a great, great finish. 15 laps to go still. Some about this building are, and David Villeman, the good split. That's right, Villeman won his first 250 race right here two years ago. Travis isn't letting him off the hook, though. He's still got him in sight. He's pulling away from his teammate now. Check out the leaderboard. David Villeman, Travis Pastrano, Wyndham Carmichael, and Rocco rounding out the top five. But I doubt that it'll stay that way. We'll be back in a moment. The 
only deals we can't make are the ones we don't see. Jerry's. Let the competition beware. Martial Arts and Fitness, where you can expect the best. Call Williams Martial Arts and Fitness Center at 858-3800. Spare Thoughts with Robert Smith, professional bowler. Okay, Robert. You gotta win this one. Gotta get up there in the money rankings with the big boys. Yes. Ooh, wait. Cool, a dime. The ABC Masters with $100,000 on the line. Sunday, 12.30 p.m. on ESPN. Scent from Speedstick. Cool. Inspired by the power of nature. Protection that smells good. How does lightning smell? Smell this. Lightning. An intense new scent from Speedstick. Nice. Inspired by the power of nature. Protection that smells good. Back in San Diego. This was what happened while we were away. Ricky Carmel. Michael made the pass on Wyndham, and Ezra Lusk hit the dust. But LaRocco also passed Wyndham for third and fourth. So it's Philemon, Pastrana, Carmichael, LaRocco, Chad Reed, and Kevin Wyndham in the top six. I'll tell you what, Philemon was gone. He pulled away from Travis and looked like that was that. But Travis has reached back, and he has started to close on Villeman. It's the Villeman is not out of the woods yet, and when they get into the last riders, I expect that to tighten up even more. Travis is the kind of kid that will not give up. Villeman will look at this like, well, it's a long year and be willing to be safe. Travis will not. That kid wants to win so bad. If you at home can't wait for the race to uh, finish to check out the results, then you should tune in to the uh, Sports Supercross live webcast on ESPN.com. Results as they happen. Well, RC was eight seconds behind Villeman. And then when they, after they made the move, he uh, lost a second to Villeman. But right now, look at this. LaRocco is starting to close on Carmichael. This could be a great battle with eight laps to go. LaRocco will not leave him alone, that's for sure. Carmichael got his first win here last year. Got around McGrath. LaRocco also got him around McGrath and was closing slightly on Carmichael. He is a fast finisher. Carmichael knows it. He's just trying to survive here. For a kid that just wanted points, man, he's digging pretty deep. Let's check out the Honda stopwatch now as Carmichael is trying to hold off Morocco. There's the uh, difference. The laps, the last lap at this lap for Villeman's advantage over Carmichael. It's down to 7.89. So Look, almost eight seconds. Well, Morocco is at the end of this freight train. It's all, everybody turned a faster lap that time. Travis, Carmichael, and LaRocco faster almost by a second than Billiman. Billiman is going to be feeling this heat. They got six laps to go. That's almost a complete heat race. It's a long time left. Jeremy McGrath fans, he's in seventh. He just passed Tim Ferry. Well, I don't think it's an arm bump situation tonight with Jeremy. The arm pump, I mean, just imagine if you're doing one of those little hand squeezers and did about a hundred of those things until your arm was just a spastic. Imagine trying to ride like that. Jeremy has rebounded and made his way up through the field a little bit. Here comes Lusk making the block pass. Lusk after going down, trying to pick up points. 
Less than six laps to go. David Villamar has the edge on Travis Pastrana. Pastrana was two tenths of a second behind Villamar on the last lap. And here's Ricky Carmichael in third. I'm just so impressed with Carmichael fighting through the, the pain barrier to participate this well. And you know, I, I broke a metacarpal in my hand, and I couldn't even button my pants. I mean, let alone try to ride. Just the vibration on the handlebars alone is painful for the kid. Let's check in with Davey Combs. Well, I know that that hand is really bothering Ricky through the whoops. But I'll tell you another thing that's working against him. With the way that Billum and, and Pastrana and to an extent Morocco, taller riders, are able to go through those whoops, they're pulling them on every lap through there. Carmichael looks good everywhere but the whoops. And the whoops, he looks like a different rider than he was in 2001. Well, they're forcing this guy, as they should, to ride at his peak. I know that's what Jeremy was trying to do and to get that title back, but he hasn't been a factor. The rest of these guys are really taking it to Ricky and forcing him to ride at his peak for as long as possible. And hopefully the kid will make a mistake. He's rode on the edge so much last year, and he did it the first round, but here he's been pretty solid. Gullivan looking for his second straight round. You think he can win the championship, Davey? Well, I'll tell you what, Villeman has never won a major championship other than some of the stuff he did in France. Coming to America and riding Supercross, I mean, this is as tough as it gets. I would be very surprised, but to tell you the truth, who'd have thought he'd come out here and win the first two races in a row? That's right. He battled John Dowd in 98 for the 125 championship. Uh, had getting three wins, but that wasn't enough to beat John Dowd out of that title. Oh, look at there. Red Rocco passing Ricky Cole. Morocco had such fast laps in the opening round at Anaheim, and it was a crash, unavailable, un unavoidable crash, because he was right behind Ricky Carmichael when Ricky went down. Morocco fighting back for a second place, has now taken third here in round two. That's a huge move Morocco had to do it. He had to show Ricky that when he should be able to beat him, that he can. These guys are going to start to respect Morocco a lot more if he keeps riding like this. And out front, Pastrana has closed the gap even more on Billum, and the lead is only is just under two seconds now. Well, Morocco looks better than the tapes I saw in his last win at Pontiac in 95. It's like a fine wine, man. This guy is just getting better and better and stronger all the time. David Villeman still with a lead on Pastrana. Villeman looking very smooth. Cuts through those groups beautifully. I'm, I'm pleased with Pastrana. Yeah, compared to last year's event here for Travis, he crashed several times getting to the main event and had that horrible crash in the first lap of the main through the whoops. Rung his bell pretty good and had to sit out after that. Much better ride. One year later for Travis, much smarter rider, and he's got a shot to win the whole thing. San Diego was Villeman's first 250 win, as we mentioned. He was the, he was the only, and still is, the only first-time winner in 250 action in San Diego. You can see how much Travis has closed the gap. Villeman's going to start feeling that. Villeman really hasn't had pressure to this point. And Travis doesn't have any either from Morocco. He's still got a pretty good cushion I, with one lap to go. Travis doesn't have to worry about anything behind him. He can afford to take a couple chances. The white flag is getting ready for David Villeman the next time around. Villeman is tough with the lead. I had a feeling that Villeman was able to get the track wired in the, in the semi. He was really frustrated with himself and his start in the heat race. Has fixed all that here in the main and a couple more corners to go. Jeremy won't quite get lapped this week, so he did a little better, but still not nearly the kind of race he would think he needs to have in his championship back. Big flag for Villeman. He won in San Diego 2000 and came back in Phoenix, Minneapolis, and New Orleans for four wins that year, finishing second behind Jeremy McGrath in the 250 points race. I got mixed up. I thought that was the last lap. Jeremy gets out of the way for Travis. Here comes Travis right out of the corner. One more lap, pulling out all the stops. Two straight weeks, Jeremy McGrath has been lapped. 
David Villeman for the second straight week is in the lead, but Travis Pastrana just might pull out all the stops here on the final lap. Villeman has got to be flawless. He cannot afford one mistake. Damon Huffman right there, number 20, the only lap driver between him and the finish line. Oh, Pastrana pulling up as David Villeman likes to look back at his competition. In fact, he hates tracks that he can't see. The competition, David Villeman, his second consecutive victory of the season. His sixth career victory. And he becomes definitely the rider to beat momentum on his side with a second consecutive win. Slaps the palm of Travis Pastrana going by, Pastrana securing second, and Mike LaRocco, a third place finish with Carmichael in fourth. So LaRocco picks up even more points on Ricky Carmichael. And David Billman remains the series points leader after two rounds. Ricky did an excellent job of limiting the damage here. A lot of people thought he was going to be a lot worse off than he was, so to let LaRocco by and only give up a couple points was pretty good, considering. I heard he was looking for at least top five, and that's what he got in fourth. Our Honda results page, Villeman, Pastrana, LaRocco, Carmichael, Chad Reed a fifth place with Windham in sixth, Luskin seventh, Ramsey, Huffman, and McGrath rounding out the top ten. We'll be back to San Diego, going down to the winner's podium after this. There's never been a better time to hit the trails because it's Suzuki Fest time. Let us reward you when you buy a new Suzuki Quad Runner ATV. Suzuki Fest rewards as low as 2.95% APR financing available on selected Quad Runner models, like the Vincent 500 and so many more at great rates too. Or how about up to $400 in your choice of free accessories? Virtually anything you want. Our deals have never been this good, but you have to get down to Suzuki Fest soon. Then go hit the trails. When people say you're bright, they mean you've got a lot going on up there. It's not something people who use drugs hear much, because over time, drugs can change their brain. And the more times they try drugs, the more they want them. It's called addiction, and it's a disease that will waste your brain. Do the right thing. Do the bright thing. Keep your brain healthy. Don't use drugs. Wake up! It's time for 7-Eleven. Start with a cup of fresh brewed 7-Eleven coffee. Then grab one of our hot breakfast sandwiches. Or choose from our bakery selections delivered fresh daily. And get your morning going. I work nights. Oops. Oh, thank heaven. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day of 50% savings. Call 800-454-6500. That's 800-454-6500 for the Wall Street Journal. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword sexiest, and vote for the world's sexiest athlete today. Round two of EA Sports Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross champion. Speed Stick, power of nature for protection that smells good. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. Nearly 70,000 fans saw David Villeman become the first Frenchman to win the first two rounds of an American Supercross series. Davey is with our winner at the podium. All right, David. Already, you're in solid control of the series. Your second straight win, fantastic. Yeah, it was a tough race, you know. Uh, you know, Travis kept me on us the 20 laps, and it was very tough. And I could pass him in the beginning of the world, and uh, that was a tough race. You know, I saw Ricky was third, and uh, the guy was still the same. And uh, I knew uh, Travis was going to be dangerous for the ring, and. Uh, with the lap belt and stuff, it was very difficult, but I'm really happy. The bikes worked great, and, uh, you know, the truck was, was really tough, and uh, I'm really happy to, uh, to win, uh, to race this show. Good job. Congratulations. Our Honda Point standings, Villeman, after leading 39 of 40 laps so far this year, has an eight-point lead. Can he hold on to the final round in Las Vegas? That'll be a live pay-per-view telecast. Our next event will be Anaheim round three. Coming up noon Eastern time. 
9 o'clock in the morning in the Pacific. Coming up next, 125 Supercross Show from San Diego. Art Deckman for David Bailey and Davey Coombs. Thanking you for being with us. From San Diego, a record-breaking crowd here in the Southern California city to see David Villeman win his second in a row. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Supercross fans have been arriving since this afternoon as EA Sports Supercross moves to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. And there is no way we can present round two without first looking back to the opening night. Round one of a new Supercross season could only be described in one word. Round two is coming up next. In San Diego, it's standing room only to witness round two of VA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. Hello, everyone. This is Art Ekman along with former champion David Bailey. Well, what action in the first race of 125 Western action? The young rookie, James Stewart, had to go to the LCQ to make the main event. He even went down in the main event. He crashed in practice. He crashed in the heat. He, cra he crashed more than anybody. He didn't crash in the LCQ. He won that. I can't imagine what this kid's going to do to the rest of the field if he stays on two wheels. On the very last lap, Roderick Tane and Christopher Gossler came together fighting for the lead and they went down that left the door open once again for Travis Preston well Preston's been there before this happened to him last year in Houston Langston threw it away that was more of a gift though I think this time Travis put himself in position to win the race now he's starting to believe he can win more let's take a look at the Suzuki storyline first of all Roderick Tane hit from behind on the track got his hit in a little later he was fined one thousand dollars for post-race actions and Stewart's learning curve well did he finally find out that slow means faster and Supercross, and who will step up this week to gain momentum in the points race? The third member of our broadcast crew, Davey Coombs. Davey. Last week in Anaheim, one Travis stepped up to fill the shoes of another Travis. And one rookie almost missed the race, but in the end, showed us a glimpse of the future. James Stewart had an amazing debut. A lot of crashes, a lot of fast laps. In the end, 45,000 new fans. After the race, I asked him if he learned anything. He said, yeah, if I slow down, I think I can win these races. And what that means is in Supercross, it's all about speed and consistency. First part of the race, James rode as hard as he could, ended up on his head. Toward the end of the race, he just put in good laps, finished right behind Preston in second. Did James learn those lessons well? I guess we'll find out. He's in the first heat race. Let's take a look at the speed stick track map, David. Well, you see the start right here. It comes down. They go right into a whoop section. Now, those aren't going to be as difficult as last week, but it's still going to get the riders tired. Let's go on board now with Keith Johnson. He takes us over the first triple. 65 feet through the air right there. Down to the far end of the stadium. You see some rocks starting to come up. That's going to throw the riders off a little bit as far as trying to pick the best line. This is the next triple he's approaching. He takes the inside, so he doesn't get the speed to triple it. you got to go wide to do that. That sends it right into the next loop section, over the tunnel, back underneath the bridge, and into the first corner. The lineup for our first qualifying heat, James Stewart, our lead man, number 259, along with Gossler, Pengry, Tedesco. Keep your eyes on those guys. Also, Buckaloo had some fast times. The first nine advanced to the main event out of each qualifying heat. The rest go to the last, the last chance qualifier, and four will be picked out of that for 22 riders in the field. Well, uh, you got to look at Stewart in this event. He was able to come from bad starts, crashes, and still wind up second in the points. I can't imagine what this kid's going to do with a good start. There he is right there. He's got a good pick to the gate. He was first choice. Not like last week. He had to start way on the outside. That's what really caused his night to go sour. It'll be interesting to see what James Stewart learned from his first professional experience in Anaheim in round one. Don't forget he went down. 
trying to qualify and had to go to the LCQ. Okay, the 30-second board is sideways. We're ready to go for our first qualifying heat from San Diego. One casually in turn one as Casey Lytle has taken the whole shot. He got out of the first turn first, but look at that move by the kid. There's McGavern trying to get back on the track, but already Stewart, a block pass for the lead, pulls the pair away to get good vision, and he's gone. It's going to be ideal, maybe, if he doesn't make a mistake now. James Stewart from Haines City, Florida. The way he works that bike to keep it low. This is the big set of whoop you dos They're like jumps. They don't stay on the top of those. They've got to find a timing through there. Pulls another tear away. Each tear away you have on your goggles. In case you were to get a bad start, to see it, to your vision, each one of those stacked on there makes your vision a little milkier. So he's getting rid of them all now that he's got the lead. Stewart, all-time winner out of the amateur ranks. As we go back in the pack to Justin Buckaloo, number 64. Number 259 on the Kawasaki. He's under the Chevy Trucks tent. Not a good run through the boots that time. He won't be able to jump up on that plateau, so he's going to lose a heap of time, but I have a feeling he's going to be able to get it back. Wheelie's over that jump. A lot of the 250s aren't even doing that. He's about three seconds ahead of Kevin Johnson from Albuquerque, New Mexico, number 757. And then Ivan Tedesco is in third, as you see who had such a disappointing race in the early going there in Anaheim. He's back in the qualifying hunt now. There's David Pingree, number 39, on the KTM. Pingree and Tedesco. I guess you could consider them veterans of this class, especially Pingree. Yeah, his first win was 1995. He just has been injured so much over that time that he hasn't gained enough points to point out of the 125s. He's starting to feel some heat now from Tedesco, who I really believe is a changed rider this year. The, the ride with Yamaha and Troy seemed to give him a little bit of confidence, better teammates to ride with, and he's showing it. Well, there you see the tremendous lead that James Stewart has taken here in our opening qualifying heat. And he is looking super confident as opposed to last week. Pingree in second place taking the lead on Johnson and Tedesco. Pingree led the main event at Anaheim and they just seemed faded back as he was passed several times ending up with a sixth place finish after leading four laps number 39. The lap times of Stewart out front unbelievable a couple seconds a lap faster than the 57 range the kid is beautiful to watch. These guys are going to be playing catch-up this year. Nice move right there by Tedesco to carry the front wheel over that bump and set up a better timing into the tunnel. Tedesco had a very good offseason, gained a lot of confidence. Here comes number 45, Tedesco, trying to make a move by Keith Johnson. Chases his line at the last second on the hippity hop of the woods. <laughs> well, at the end of the woods, they got the plateau right there. And if you get the woods right, you have enough momentum to jump up on there. It's a big time saver. Riders are doing all they can do to get up on that and not lose the time. But just watch the it. It's beautiful. I've not seen anyone just burst onto the professional scene with this kind of authority, this kind of style and technique. Other than Damon Bradshaw back in, I think, 89, he won his first event. In dramatic fashion, coming from behind after several crashes, Stewart is just like that. Stewart, Pingree, Johnson, our top three on the final lap. Of our six lap 125 qualifier, the 125 West Division. See if he gets up on this plateau. He jumps up on it, off into the corner. Big time server. Now watch him wheelie this next jump. Fix the front wheel up. He just stays a little bit flatter. It's probably worth about a mile an hour. But it's a lot. On the fifth lap. James Stewart just looking cool and calm as he heads into those woods. Been a long time since I saw a pink rod. I guess it's fuchsia, but it has a pink color to it. Brock Glover from San Diego here one time used a pink riding outfit to win 30 grand in a, in a master's race at the Coliseum. There's the white flag, so it's on the final lap now. People make fun 
Brock, but I don't yeah. see anybody making fun of Stewart right now. Well, Pastrana was going to wear a pink bunny outfit in the Nationals this year. But well, yeah, that's the reason cool. he was going to do that. Uh, there was a crash earlier, and uh, he decided that it was best not to not to rub it in. Stewart chasing up onto that plateau a little bit. There's that section where. I think he saw Travis Pastrana wheelie into that. He thought, well, I can do that. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot of the top 250 riders that have been around for years that are starting to watch Stewart in practice to find out some ideas on how to get through some of the sections fast. He's an innovator. Buckaloo is in that final qualifying position with McCavern behind him. As we look at it, what everybody feels is going to be a future great in the professional ranks. Moving up one. Brandis moving back one in our final lap. The checkers for Stewart. The top nine riders moving on now directly to the main event. Stewart, Pingree, Kevin Johnson, Ivan Tedesco, Bobby Bonds, Shane Bess, Olaf, Buckaloo, and Michael Brandis. Well, that's what we expected to see out of Stewart of Anaheim with all the hype he came in there with, but he was a little over anxious. Now he's starting to cash in on what we all thought he could, was capable of. Checking out the Honda leaderboard bef before this packed house here in San Diego. You see there, Pingree doing a good job holding on to that second place position against Kevin Johnson. We'll be right back. We've got a second qualifier coming up. It'll be just as good or better. Round two of the EA Sports Supercross is being brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross Champion by EA Sports. If it's in the game, it's in the game. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. There's never been a better time to hit the road because it's Suzuki Fest time. Let us reward you when you buy a new Suzuki motorcycle. Suzuki Fest rewards as low as 4.95% APR financing for 60 months. Available on cruisers like the Marauder 800. Or get a sport bike like the Katana 600 at a great rate too. Or how about up to $600 in your choice of free accessories. Virtually anything you want. Our deals have never been this good. But hurry in because Suzuki Fest ends soon. can play what's it gonna be us or them they're going to kill you try to survive Grab home. from the filmmakers that brought you the fast and the furious and die hard they're gonna kill somebody you gotta catch me first rollerball pow ready pg-13 get in the game february 8th Moo. Now's a great time to call 1-800-GATEWAY, because right now you can get a free Epson printer, scanner, or gateway PC camera with the purchase of select desktop computers, like the 500S. It comes fully loaded with an Intel Pentium 4 processor, a 15-inch flat panel display, and CD burner. You get it all for just $1,199 after a $100 mail-in rebate. So just call 1-800-GATEWAY or visit your local gateway store today. Hurry, offer ends soon. The promotion, a new title, a bigger paycheck, better days ahead. Your hard work paid off, and so did that extra confidence from getting rid of your gray hair with Just For Men Hair Color. Its vitamin formula rejuvenates your hair and energizes you with a natural look in five easy minutes. When you feel confident, it shows. Just For Men, the rejuvenator. Nolan and the Sharks break the ice against Brendan Shanahan and the Red Wings. A collision of Western Conference Division leaders on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. Sharks at Red Wings, 8 Eastern Wednesday on ESPN. Uh, 12, again, 
Welcome back to San Diego, where we've just seen a dominating performance in the opening qualifying heat of the 125 West. Let's go down to Davey Coombs, who's with our winner. James, that was an awful comfortable looking ride. I'd say even confident. Yeah, um, I mean, my Kawasaki was working awesome out there. Uh, I didn't get it great as start as I won, but I moved up through the pack real quick and uh, just checked out from there. I got to say, you looked the way you ended the race last week. Not quite as tight, very relaxed. Yeah, uh, I mean, I felt real good out there. Uh, I was tight for the first couple of laps, but after that, I was good. Good luck in the main. Thanks. An awesome performance as we check out the lineup for our second qualifying heat. There's number 27, Roderick Tain. Preston, the winner of our first round, number 29. 18 is Brock Sellers, who had the lead and went down in the whoops in that first opening race in Anaheim. That was too bad, because Brock was really capable to get up there and stay with that group, but just trying to come back from a mistake in the 125 class, too much to ask. Interesting to see how 132 Billy Lanovich does. He's the youngster that is coming up through the KTM ranks. But that's Roderick Tain as he salvaged that crash in the last lap in Anaheim for a fifth place finish. Look at Preston. I'll tell you what, Gosler and Preston are nowhere near each other, and uh, Tain are nowhere near each other on the starting line. Probably a good thing. Maybe it is a good thing as the 30-second board is up. It will go sideways any second. It's sideways right now, 5 to 10 seconds. The gates will drop for our second 125 West qualifying heat from San Diego. It's a terrific start. Number 68 is Matt Walker, and he fades as Brock Sellers, number 18 of the KTM, takes over. Sellers, a very experienced rider who's known for second place finishes. Oh. And look at Tain. Oh, my goodness. Well, he made a mistake at the approach to that triple. Walker dove to the inside but wasn't able to jump it. Tain went for it even though he didn't have the speed. So this guy wants to get back at the lead right now and where he feels like he belongs. He feels like he got gypped out of the main event win last week. Yamov Troy from uh, France. Roderick Tain in second place as Sellers is in the lead. And, oh. Walker almost had that saved. He got in there. The back end got away from him. But it takes so much energy to recover from something like that. He's just going to have to settle down and try to get into Maine now. Matt Walker, a late signee for Pro Circuit after they found out James Stewart was going to be under the big Kawasaki tent. Here's Brock Sellers, our leader, in our second qualifying heat. I'll tell you what, I reading some things on Matt. I don't know him well, but I like what he has to say. I was reading an article on him and how he got that ride and what he's doing to keep it, how much he appreciates it, and that's the kind of passion it takes to be up front here with these guys. Just one mistake there really cost him. He was on a plane uh, to Paris with me and uh, to try to show his skills to go to the GPs if he couldn't get a ride in the States. But here is number 87, Craig Decker, and he's got a good ride in fourth place. Craig broke two wrists last year. He was working for Kawasaki as a test rider and decided to run a few races, and uh, it proved out to be disastrous for the season. As we go back to our leader, Brock Sellers. Here See comes Brock. Tate. Look at Brock starting to find a timing through there. Gets up onto that plateau the way Stewart did in the first heat. Tane does it too, but he's got a little bit of a power advantage. Andrew Short out of the race. As we look at Sellers right now, his KTM teammate, Billy Lanovich, had another problem in the first lap. He's running clear back in 17th, but I'll tell you what, Lanovich ran with Stewart in practice for a few laps, seemed to be able to, to match the speed, but he's had no luck in the first lap of his pro debut. Brock Sellers, two seasons ago, was only four points away from the 125 East Championship. He won the 125 crown in the Paris Supercross in the offseason as we take a look at Tain, who also won three events in that Paris Supercross. Sellers and Tain right there going through the tunnel, back through the mechanics area, get their signal. These guys are running 59 second lap times right now, low 59s compared to the 57 and a half by Stewart out front. So these guys are going to have to find something extra to make that main event interesting. Tain going for the triple behind 
Sellers. Looks like Sellers has got it nailed right down. As you see the green, that means they advanced one lap. One position, I should say. If you see a red mark on their number, that means they dropped back like Johnson did there. Decker hanging on. Look at Preston now, starting to work his way in. Strong through the whoops. One of the taller riders in the 125 class reminds me a little bit of the way Travis was able to use his size to make things happen on the 125. Preston has that same ability. Taking on Coppins. Preston number 29 on the Honda. Oh, they got a good battle going on. Coppins doesn't want to give in to the winner. Check out the whoops. Preston deciding to go wide, get a good run at it. He should be able to make this pass. Gave up a pretty big lead going in, though. That, that hurt his chances. Look at Tane. He's pulled up a little bit on Sellers, but time is running out on Roderick Tane. As you see there, the interval and the battle for first. The Sellers starting to find a good timing through there. Tane trying to figure out that rhythm. Chances are winding down now to try to get a win out of this. They're coming up on the white flag for Brock Sellers and Roderick Zane, who have pulled a big lead on the third place rider, Craig Decker. And the pressure that Tane put on Sellers dropped those lap times down to 58. Still not quite what Stewart was able to manage, but the track is starting to get a little bit worn down in places. Good shot, giving us an idea of the track. You see the tunnel over there and the leader coming down the timing section off the plateau, approaching the triple on the near side. Sellers wheeling in that little bump before the triple. And when he's on the starting line, he's able to see certain things that Stewart was doing in the first heat. And if you can't see it from his vantage point, you can see it on the big screen. Got that master. It's, it's a little bit of time, but you need that on the 125. Not a battle in sight for those that are qualified. Sellers, Tane, Decker, Coppins, Preston, Walker, Elliott, Isaiah Johnson, and Eric Viejo out of Mexico, the top nine right now with Danny Smith on the bubble. The Trekkers waving for Brock Sellers. So Brock, after qualifying fourth in his very first heat of the season in Anaheim, comes back to win the second qualifying heat here in San Diego. Good sportsmanship shown by Roderick Tay going up to congratulate Brock Sellers of KTM. A little better than what we saw last week, but kind of can't blame the guy for being a little upset, man. It's, uh, Different like circumstances, obviously, as we take a look at the Suzuki results board in our second qualifying heat. Sellers, Tane, Decker, Preston, Coppins, Walker, Elliott, Isaiah Johnson, and Eric Viejo in the top nine. And Danny Smith, a guy we thought that might be a contender this year, will have to go to the LCQ. We'll be right back with uh, a discussion from Davey down on the winner's podium when we return to San Diego. It's back January 25th, 26th, and 27th at the Richmond Raceway Complex. It's Bassarama, the world's most exciting fishing show. There's over 140,000 square feet of tackle and boats that just can't be beat. Attend seminars from nationally ranked pros and learn the tricks that consistently catch fish. Doors will open 9 to 8 on Friday, 9 to 8 on Saturday, and 9 to 5 on Sunday. Bassarama, it's the world's most exciting fishing show. Do you drive to Tyson's Corner or further to receive service for your European-made car? Why, when the European Service Center is right here in Leesburg. Locally owned and operated, European Service Center has over 30 years' experience, specializing in repairing those autos made by Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Saab, Volvo, and Porsche. Our factory-trained technicians can take care of all of your car's mechanical needs, from routine service checks to major repairs. Stay right here in Loudoun. Bring your car to European Service Center for personal quality service. Want to go back to a time when sports was mega cool? Then take a bodacious trip back to the 70s on ESPN Classic. From Reggie rocking the fences to Ali rumbling in the jungle. It's a whole week of righteous games and primo sports legends. All from the 1970s. No bad vibes or bogus games. Get down with your host Dave Kaplan for Back to the 70s Week. Starts 8 p.m. Monday only on ESPN Classic. Get ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC-NOW. 
Then grab one of our hot breakfast sandwiches. Or choose from our bakery selections delivered fresh daily. And get your morning going. I work nights. Oops. Oh, thank heaven. I'm a mama's boy. I pity the fool who ain't one. Mama misses you. So when you call her collect, dial 1-800-COLLECT. It'll save her a buck or two. Mama loves saving me with 1-800-COLLECT. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Upcoming events in our EA Sports Supercross calendar. We head to Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix on February 26th, returning to Anaheim for round five before heading to the 125 East Division in Indianapolis and Minneapolis. Our EA Sports Rider of the Week has a new number and a new trophy this year. The 125 outdoor champ Mike Brown is competing in the 250 Supercross class out west before challenging the 125 East field. He shared his thoughts on several subjects. I want to win the 125 Supercross the Eastern Region and back to the 125 Nationals, but the top seven or eight in the 250 or top five would be great. That was great, you know, that's um, probably my favorite number. Dale Earnhardt, you know, I've always liked him. And number three, it's, it's a great number, you know, it's up there with all the other guys, and I think you get noticed more. It seemed like it took forever, but you know, I've won the championship, and you know, I don't feel like I've been. I feel like I'm just now starting racing again. You know, it feels like a whole new career for me, starting over. And you know, I'm excited. Hopefully, I have a few more years racing and a few more number one plates. They're out there to do their best. And I am too. I think I've just been around longer, and I guess know what it takes to win. You know, I've been in their shoes. You know, and got knocked around and beat around. And you know, it's. Uh, I don't know. I just feel feel more comfortable everywhere else on the track. Our Honda close-up this week focuses on Travis Preston. Last week at Anaheim, most eyes were on young James Stewart. Travis getting a slow start in 11th, snuck by the field, moving into third by lap 12. And in the end, he may have surprised even himself. The season's opening 125 West win for Travis Preston was his second career victory. They were both historic wins. The first ever for Husqvarna and Fast by Ferrati last year. The first ever for Amsoil Honda this season. With Travis winning last week, we asked several riders who they thought now would win the championship. And the answers, well, let's put it this way. They weren't shy. I would have liked to said myself, but after my last, last week, um, I don't know. It'd be really, really hard. Um, everybody's riding good. There's so many people in one weekend they could win. I mean, I'm going to try to hang it out every race and get the best results. And at the end of the year, hopefully that pays off and be the champion. And I think we have a chance at it. We had a rough weekend last weekend. But uh, between me and Justin, I think we can uh, get up there this weekend and prove uh, that we can win a championship and we can do good in a race. I think I had the best chance. Uh, those guys are really good, but as uh, long as I keep my head together, I think I can do it. I'd have to say myself, because I feel that I ride very consistent, and Bubba makes a lot of mistakes. So hopefully, it'll be like last week, and I'll just ride around. People will make mistakes, and I'll end up winning. Up next, Davey Coombs and Jeff Emig peruse the whoops. When we get back to Supercross action, What is the scent of an avalanche? Smell this. Avalanche, a refreshing new scent from Speed Stick. Cool. Inspired by the power of nature. Protection that smells good. How does lightning smell? Smell this. Lightning, an intense new scent from Speed Stick. Nice. Inspired by the power of nature. Protection that smells good. The Wolf has been linked to more than a dozen bombings in the last decade. I've talked to him. You cannot take the law into your own hands. Thanks for your advice. 
From the jungles of Columbia. What do you think of this place? To the streets of Washington. No one can stop a killer except the man who knows his face. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Collateral damage. Rizar starts February 8th at a theater near you. If you want great body that lasts, you need the right physique. Not that kind of physique. <laughs> physique 20 hour volumizing collection of shampoo, conditioner, and styling products. With physique, get 20 hours of unstoppable volume and body. Yeah, that kind of body. Physique 20 hour volumizing collection. Give your hair the physique it needs. RPM tonight is the fastest 30 minutes on television. It comes your way tomorrow night at 10 Eastern for all of your motorsports news. It's RPM tonight on ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, as predicted, the whoops in Anaheim were nasty, nasty. And with his take on round one, former champion Jeff Emig took a walk with Davey Combs. Well, as we saw last week at Anaheim, the Whoops play a big factor in the 125 main event. This week at San Diego, they might be even tougher. Jeff Emming, how's the guy go through this? Well, they're going to land off of the triple, shift to third, and get way back on the seat and hit it with the RPMs wrapped all the way out. These things are almost waist deep. What happens if a guy's front wheel drops in on one of these? Well, if a guy gets in trouble, he's going to want to make a mistake at the end because for each one of these Whoops that he's that he doesn't skim, that he misses, it's going to be it's going to be about a half a second. What about who's this going to favor? A tall guy like a Travis Preston, or a short guy like Christopher Gosler? I'd say a tall guy like Travis Preston has a big advantage uh, because he's bigger, he's taller, and he can he can get back over the back fender further. Therefore, he can probably hit it with a little more speed. So, who's your favorite to win this race? Uh, my favorite to win the race would be James Stewart if he doesn't make any mistakes here. <laughs> Here's our Nissan, the last chance qualifier results. It was Christopher Gossler, who was on the podium in the first round, winning the LCQ. McGavran, Keith Johnson, and Danny Smith also making the cut. Casey Lytle, he gets the gas card this week. Too bad for Casey Lytle, a rider capable of winning. He has won before, having to sit this one out. We mentioned the Powerade hole shot many times, but this is actually what it is. It's a line drawn across after the first turn, and the first rider over that line coming out of the first turn wins $1,000 in the 125 ranks, and in the 250 ranks, $1,500. Nice extra little chunk of change for getting the start. There's Stewart. There's James Stewart, and he's obviously a lead rider on the Honda starting grid as we get set for our second round of the year. Main event for the 125 West. Stewart, Sellers, Pingree, Tane, Johnson, Decker, Tedesco. I expect probably with the confidence we saw of Stewart in the qualifying round that he'll probably dominate, but behind him, look out. Well, you know, there's plenty of guys in here that can win. There's one of them right there. Tane looked like he meant business. He had a real shot at it last week. Another guy, Seller, who went down while leading last week. He's got a great opportunity, won his heat race. But, you know, we talked about Stewart, possible runaway. It's all coming down to the start. If he doesn't get a start, he's going to have to fight to get the win. 32nd board is up. The third largest crowd since 1987 in Supercross history is right here in San Diego, watching the card go sideways. And we're set for the main event of the 125 West Round 2. Pretty clean start out of that corner. And number 27 is Roderick Kane, the leader. The power eight whole shot winner, Roderick Kane, taking over in first place. David Pinkery is doing a good job moving up the ranks, and so is Tedesco. Tedesco moved briefly into second. It's a bar-to-bar -bar battle now with number 39, David Pinkery, and number 45, Ivan Tedesco. Pinkery takes the outside. Tedesco had a shot, didn't take it. Probably trying to play things smart right now. Last week, he get caught up in a first lap crash. He can't afford to be too cautious right here because Stewart, who got a terrible jump out of the gate, he went in the first corner of the mid-pack, came out in third. That he makes things it. interesting, David. Yeah. The 259 in the Fuchsia on the green bike. 
That is the young rookie, James Stewart, in a battle with Ivan Tedesco. Look at that. to get away. James Stewart fought through the hard times and crashing in the first round for a second place. Put himself in position to take second when Gosselin and Zane crashed. And now he's trying to put himself in position to catch the leaders. Well, he almost was a little over anxious there getting around Tedesco. That worked for him. He had the inside and Tedesco is probably thinking, man, I should have done that when I had the chance. I wouldn't have been pass like that by Stewart. Stewart now making some gains on David Pingree. Pingree. A race lap leader and Pingree goes down. Pingree was leading the race last week and he faded this time. He slipped out. That is just intelligence by the young kid. He's coming into this class. He is so smart. I've never seen anyone improve so fast from week to week and learn so much. He chose not to follow to set himself up. He had a good run going to the woods. Oh, here he goes to the inside of Tane. They touch wheels. James Stewart and Tane are going at it. Another smart move. He caught Tane by a surprise, went to the inside. It's not faster to go to the inside than it is for the pass. You know what I find amazing right now is here is a youngster who just dominated the amateur ranks, and yet he is finding ways to win here on the track. Well, you know. I guess more experienced riders. It's He's smart, Arthur. He's just, brilliant the way he rides the way he moves and he does it all with style he's got so much flash i never you can stop action this take these shows and watch them over again because what you're seeing right here is we're going to be saying in the very near future perhaps the most talented motocross rider ever and Tane in second place number 27 has a five second lead over third place in ivan tedesco travis elliott is behind him. <laughs> Tane just went into this corner. He didn't have enough of a run on Stewart to go into the block pass, but Stewart, just to be sure, jumped the double into the corner and looked over his shoulder. He can't take his chances. It'll be fascinating at the end of the year, too, to see James Stewart take on the 125 East Riders, Langston, and Brown in that category. And of course, that is a pay-per-view. Get your party ready, your Supercross party on May 5th and sign up for pay-per-view in Las Vegas for that 125 shootout. So was Stewart dominating in this second round with Tane, Tedesco, Elliott, and Kaplan with the top five. We'll be right back to San Diego to see when the checkers will fly in this 125 round. I can't stand looking at that thing. I think it's cool. It's Suzuki's first sport utility ATV, the all-new Vincent 500 Automatic. Let me tell you, that Vincent's one hard-working... Hey, keep on. You're of not it. the boss of me. I don't and you know what? I would appreciate... It's got style and a ton of great features. Will you shut up? Or you'll do what? Stare him to death? Oh, oh, now choose reduced financing like 2.95% APR or up to $400 in free accessories. What? You can't bring that motorcycle in here, you filthy animal. At 400 bucks a night, I'll bring whatever I want to my room. Security! <laughs> Help me! I've been run over by Mad Mike Jones! Winter X Games 6 in Aspen, sponsored by Taco Bell, begins February 1st on ESPN. Surprisingly, your finer hotels don't offer hourly rates. Not to worry. With a bit of bravado and a keen sense of timing, can I get some more chocolates? You too can enjoy life's little luxuries. Like the superb taste of Taco Bell. Great tasting, high quality food even the common man can appreciate. No, please open the door. I'm not decent. Open the store. You know I'm keeping the robe. Score a crunchy taco and bean burrito together, just 98 cents. With better beef, beans, and tortillas. For a tasty deal, think outside the bun. 
Sunday, a night of originals from ESPN. The debut of The Block. First at eight, NBA Hoop Dreams from the bottom up. The premiere of Down Low, Life in the D-League. PTI at nine. At 9.30, ride the bus to the playoffs. The Life, Jerome Bettis. At 10, part one of the season, Arizona Wildcat football. Down low, Life in the D-League at 8. PTI at 9. The Life, Jerome Bettis at 9.30. The season, Arizona football at 10. The premiere of the block, Sunday night on ESPN. Welcome back to San Diego and a quiet crowd in their seats. A near 70,000 fans watching the artistry of number 259, James Stewart. I think they're in awe of him right now. I am too. And I've been around the sport for a long time, or I've seen Supercross since the very beginning. And I'm just amazed. I, I knew about this kid. I knew how fast he was, how much talent. But it's more than I thought. Everyone else is surprised too. The 250 riders are impressed with him as well. Let's take a Honda stopwatch between the two, Stewart and Tain. Look at that. A 2.7 second lead in one lap uh, from a 1.59 second lead in the lap before. He's just inching away. He makes very few mistakes. He's fast. Going wide here, setting himself up for the triple. And I'll tell you what, I. I recorded the show from last week. I watched these things and I studied the style. And if you stop action the tape anywhere on this kid, he's always in the right position on the motorcycle. That's why he can do all these things so well. If you at home can't wait till the race is over, check out the EA Sports Supercross Live webcast on ESPN.com. That's ESPN.com for the live webcast. You get the results, results uh, as they happen. And it won't take long to see this kid to see a checkered flag. He started racing at four years old on three wheels. Went a couple of years on three wheels before converting to two. Makes two look easy. You know what else he's done is he's studied all the videotapes. You know his sponsor Fox used to send him the, the season wrap up of videos for the season and he would study all of it. He knows all the moves. He probably remembers things you and I have said. This kid is very, very prepared. Let's go to Davey, trackside. I'll tell you what, not only will James Stewart have a record, his first professional record, if he wins this race as the youngest 125 Supercross winner ever, he will also have the points lead because last week's winner, Travis Preston, is mired all the way back in ninth place, can't really move up. So Stewart is going to be in control of the 125 West region if he holds on. Roderick Tate in second place will probably inch up on the points list as well. Ivan Tedesco rebounding from a fourth of the first round. Travis Elliott in fourth. Pinkery now in fifth. This Collins Decker Preston now in eighth. As we see our leader and in the second place rider, number 27 on the Yamaha of Troy, Roderick Tate. To add to Davies' comment on Ryder having trouble, Sellers having to ride around with no front fender, clear back in 19th place. So. The early leader last week went down. Worst luck here in San Diego. San Diego is the site of the very first 125 Supercross race. That was back in 1985. Ty Campbell, one of six riders to win their first professional Supercross race here in San Diego. Stewart is likely to become number seven. We've seen Ryan Hughes do it. Kyle Lewis, Donnie Schmidt, Jeff Willow back in 96. Mikel Pichon, some pretty good riders in that list. Seven laps. Jeremy Albright. Nicknamed J-Bone, the mechanic for Jeff Emig, when Jeff was able to steal that crown away from... Oh! So smart to be able to save that and preserve the lead. Biggest mechanic. Uh-oh, well, we set the watch. That lead just shrunk. Seven laps to go, a little less than seven, actually. But think of the experience of having a mechanic like Jeremy Albrecht, who was with Emic all the years, and they finally were able to defeat McGrath in 97, to be able to share all that, that knowledge with this kid. Valuable information right away. And Emic was such a great outdoor rider, too. 125 championship, 250 championship, back-to-back. -back. Well, they're saying this kid is much better outdoors than he is Supercross, and so I hate to see that. Pretty fast here. Let's check out that move by Stewart again. Jumps in. It looks like he's going to get his front wheel caught. Now he cases that jump a little bit, but 
He knew he was in trouble. All he had to do was just get the clutch in, not stall the engine, and make sure he leaned to his left. Because if he'd leaned to his right, he wouldn't have been able to reach the ground. He would have tipped over. He lost three seconds, but did not lose the lead. David Coombs, from your vantage point. Well, I got to tell you, check this out. This is Matt Walker from the Simple Green Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. He's been off to a tough start so far this year. A snap chain, that means a DNF for Walker and the Simple Green team. After a 22nd place in the first round. Nothing going wrong with this guy. I'm really impressed, Art, with his poise, his ability to recover. He made a lot of mistakes leading up to that one. He made a couple right after it. But he's pulled right back up, dropped his lap time back down, a second faster than Tane that last lap. He's just excited, a little bit nervous. His first win, I guarantee you, all that's catching up with him right now. The previous winner of the uh, at the youngest stage of a 125 Supercross was Kyle Lewis at 16 years of age and 144 days. And of course, James Stewart is much younger. Still at 16. Our top five. We'll be right back with more Supercross action from the 125 West in San Diego with five laps to go. We'll be back for those checkers. Martial Arts and Fitness Center at 858-3800. It's back January 25th, 26th, and 27th at the Richmond Raceway Complex. It's Bassarama, the world's most exciting fishing show. There's over 140,000 square feet of tackle and boats that just can't be beat. Attend seminars from nationally ranked pros and learn the tricks that consistently catch fish. Doors will open 9 to 8 on Friday, 9 to 8 on Saturday, and 9 to 5 on Sunday. Bassarama, it's the world's most exciting fishing show. A special Friday night fight. First on ESPN, two champions meet in a 12-round welterweight fight. NABF champ Ben Tacky versus USBA champ Teddy Reed. Then more excitement on ESPN2, a 12-round light heavyweight title fight. NABF and USBA champion Reggie Johnson versus Antonio Tarper. Nine special Friday night fights. It all starts Friday at 8 p.m. on ESPN, then continues at 9.30 on ESPN2. Oh. Can play. What's it gonna be? Us or them? They're going to kill you! Try to survive. Grab hold! From the filmmakers that brought you The Fast and the Furious and Die Hard. They're gonna kill somebody. Gotta catch me first. <laughs> Rollerball. Pow! Rated PG-13. Get in the game February 8th. West Supercross action from San Diego. This young man is 16 years of age. His birthday was in December, late December. Is way out in front. December 21st. He's way out in front of the pack now and looking for his very first professional victory. Hey, that's the most mistakes I've seen him make in a row. That, that sequence back there leading up to his mistake in the corner. He lost all the time, but he's opened it back up over Tane. He makes a little mistake there as well. The track is much more technical, a little bit busier than it was last week in Anaheim. These riders are starting to feel it. Right about here, the few laps to go, these guys are feeling pretty tired. Let's check out the engine sounds. Four 
two-stroke in second place. A little bit deeper, throatier sound than the two-stroke that Stewart is riding. Four-stroke seems inevitable in a few years, three to five years or so. It'll be all four-strokes because of the emissions and laws, but so far two-strokes seem to be getting the edge. As we watch James Stewart, let's go back to David Coach. I heard you guys talking about James's gear a little bit earlier. Is it Fuchsia? Is it Magenta? Well, I went straight to the designer, Pete Fox, and asked him. He said, no, it, it's pink. He said, James wanted to keep it old school, keep it real, just like Brock Lover, so forget about the funny names. It's pink and riding gear. <laughs> the Christopher Gossler fans who hit the podium last week in third. He's now in eighth position as we just check out a brilliant ride by James Stewart. What a thrill for this kid in front of the biggest crowd we've had in a very long time to win his first Supercross. If he can hang on here, working his way through lap riders, got to be a little bit smart and patient, but he has a cushion now, so he can afford to take his time a little bit more. The actual attendance for Richard for Supercross was set back in 1993. 79,103. That was at Pontiac, a bigger stadium, more seats, and a lot of enthusiasm. Well, he is starting to take some of the suspense out of this thing by pulling away, like we suspected he may, but on the beginning. How about the, the authority this kid made his passes with? No time wasted, a lot like Ricky Carmichael, just going for it right away. If you wait a lap, you might miss your opportunity. He recognizes that just like the season better. Boy, he's really pulling the lead now on team. Starting to salute the crowd a little bit. Tane in second, Tedesco still in third. Looking at the white flag for James Stewart. A final lap of the second round of the 125 West. And the points lead for the young 16-year-old. Roderick Tain, after a fifth place finish in the opening round, is cruising in second with Tedesco in third. Tedesco has made up a little bit of time. He's got a pretty big lead over Pingry. He can afford to take a chance or two to try to get up closer to, to Tang. After last week, you never know. James pointing to the crowd, acknowledging the fine fans that were on their feet and cheering him on over that triple. Travis Preston has moved up to fifth. Nice balls of popping for this great rider. <laughs> Doesn't have the timing down this last lap. There's probably so much going on in his head right now. After the race last week in Anaheim where he took second, he took a little time off with his buddy, Jim Griffey Jr. to watch football with the checkered flag right now as he puts his eyes to the sky. James Stewart wins his first professional race here with the 125 West. That's his dad in the uh, white brim cap. Scott Taylor, one of his representatives, hugging his dad. Scott Taylor has uh, a pretty high opinion of this kid, saying he could come along and break some of the records that Ricky has already set. He already broke them all in the amateur ranks, and he's on his way here in the pro. Actually, his dad shows a lot of cool during the race and lets it hang out, of course, after the checkered frag, but it's his mom that gets the most nervous. <laughs> You know that whatever's going on in these kids' head out there when they're racing, it's you can triple that up in the stands for the girlfriends, parents, wives. Here's a replay of one of the few negatives. At the end of the loop section, lost his timing a little bit, kept his cool, stayed on the bike, kept the engine running. And the fans, lead. like in Los Angeles, are standing on their feet as he took the checkers. Right there, number 259. He's going to make that number famous. He didn't Super even bother to jump the finish line jump. I think it was just such a relief, Art, to get that over with, because he did have a rough spot in the middle section of that race. James Stewart is making the experts look good, saying that he could win a 125 championship in his first pro season, like Bradshaw, like Fonseca. And if he keeps going like this, it's pretty much of a sure thing. And it's nice 
you see the, the response he gets from the crowd, too. All right, Suzuki results. Tane holding on to second. Tedesco holding on to third with Pengree. And Preston rounding out the top five. Gosler moved up to sixth. With Decker, Elliott, Smith, and Johnson rounding out the top ten. The Sellers ending up down in 15th. A tough blow for Brock Sellers' title chances. There's James Seward finally with the helmet off. Let's go down to Davey who's trying to chase and catch up with him. Well, I'll tell you what, James, that didn't take too long. Your second pro race, you get your first ever victory. You have already got your first professional record. You are now the youngest winner ever in EA Sports Supercross. Dude, I, I, I'm so happy right now. Uh, my Kawasaki was working good out there. Uh, I had a couple bobbles midway through the race, and I uh, mean, uh, Dude, all the riders, I'd like to thank all the riders for being out here. Everybody that made it, it's an honor to be out here. Being in front of all the fans is awesome. And you lived your whole life waiting for this moment. Does it feel as good as you thought it would? I want to cry right now. Dude, I'm so happy. I mean, I'm glad I got the first one out the way. I won my heat race, so I think I had a good night tonight. Congratulations, James. Thanks. Supercross history made tonight in San Diego, not only before a great crowd, but before a very happy Stewart family as... James Stewart wins his first professional race. We'll be back to wrap things up. I'm a mama's boy. I pity the fool who ain't one. Mama misses you. So when you call her collect, dial 1-800-COLLECT. It'll save her a buck or two. Mama loves save me with 1-800-COLLECT. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Moo. Now's a great time to go 1-800-GATEWAY because right now you can save $100 on great PCs like the Gateway 300S desktop. It comes loaded with an Intel Celeron processor and CD burner for only $7.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate or check out the lightweight Solo 1400 notebook. It's only $9.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate. These amazing deals won't last long, so go 1-800-GATEWAY. Hurry, offer ends soon. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day of 50% savings. Call 800-454-6500. That's 800-454-6500 for the Wall Street Journal. Ice the knees, ice the threes. Will Tennessee take out another top 10 team when they battle the Orangemen? Syracuse, Tennessee, tonight at 8 on ESPN. Round two of EA Sports Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki, the reigning AMA 125 Eastern Region Supercross and Arena Cross champion. Speed Stick, power of nature for protection that smells good. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, and scooters. The historic moment tonight in San Diego is James Stewart becomes the youngest 125 Supercross winner in the sports history here in America. It should make for a great East-West shootout. Coming up as the finale on May 5th in Las Vegas is once again a live pay-per-view. Stewart, our winner, Tane and Tedesco second and third. Davies with Tane and Tedesco. Roderick, very good ride, but Stewart, a little faster tonight. Yeah, James uh, was a little faster tonight, uh, but... I was riding pretty good, consistent. Uh, I would like to ride smart because I don't want any crash because last weekend was not very good for me. So I'm very, good. I'm very happy for my second place and it's great. Uh, and Hanrod, turning next here to Ivan Tedesco, your teammate Ivan. Nice ride. I know you had a bad opener last week. Way to rebound. Yeah, last week I had a little bad luck, you know, got in a first turn pileup, but. This weekend, you know, got a good start and uh, came through to third and uh, just rode a, th a strong third. Started so catching him a little at the end, but uh, just he was going fast, so I couldn't catch him. Good job for you and Yamaha Troy. Yeah, thanks a lot.
So checking out the Suzuki point standings, Stewart gains the points lead, but Preston only six points back, Roderick Tain nine points back, so if anything happens to Stewart, they're in good position, along with Gossler and Ivan Tedesco. James Stewart, beyond his years. It's amazing, and it's so nice to see a kid come in that young with so much hype and live up to all that expectation, and it's obvious that he loves this sport. The great big smile of telling Davey, I'm happy, I could just cry right now, and I'll tell you what, now that he's got this win out of the way, Art, he may be even more confident from now on. That's scary to think about. Coming up our next event, will James Stewart continue this domination? Well, you can find out. Round three from Anaheim, the 250s. You see the time there, the 125s, one Eastern. Should be some exciting action as most of the 125 riders now are battling for second place behind this young man, Stewart. How would you compare Stewart with Bradshaw and Fonseca winning a pro season their first pro year? Well, Bradshaw was the only other rider of everybody, including guys like Carmichael and McGrath, that ever hit the pro scene with this much style and poise and speed and talent. It's, it's just amazing. Coming up next, the Branson Steel Timber Sports Season Finale. Art Ekman for David Bailey and Davey Combs. Thanks for being with us. Welcome to Branson, Missouri and Silver Dollar City. We